When you really want to make a good selection mask inside a Lightroom Classic, how do you choose the best mask for the job? I'll show you a few things that might help. Masking subjects coming up. I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and there are times inside a Lightroom Classic that I need to make a mask over a subject and I want to do some precise editing. So the mask has to be good. But what is the best method? Let me show you some tricks inside a Lightroom Classic and then we'll maybe even dip our toes into Photoshop as well for just a little bit. Now, if you're a member of my mailing list, then you've already received a link to download some of the images that I'm going to be working on in today's episode. Now, if you're not a member and you want to be, so you can get practice images in, in advance, go to my website, click imagelight.com and click on subscribe, fill out the form, and I'll put you on the list to receive notice of my videos and advanced images for practice. Now let's get into Lightroom Classic so we can figure out how to make a really nice subject mask. As always, working on the current version of Lightroom Classic, we've got a few images here. I've made some, see this little triangle here? That means these are virtual copies so we can work on them and we can compare them later if we want. So let's go in here, we'll open up this. Now what could be easier than making a mask over this bird? So let's go in the develop module and we'll go on to mask and we're gonna do subject. We'll just click subject and boom, it's created a mask. Now the best way to, to do this is what I'm gonna do on all of these images is I'm gonna select the subject then I'm gonna invert it so that I can work on the background and we can see just how good this mask is. So if you wanna invert a mask, you come up to these three little dots and pull down and go to invert the mask. But if you look over here on the side, there is a shortcut and that shortcut is option on the Mac option apostrophe or if it's on a pc it's going to be alt apostrophe so we're going to use that so let's go ahead and we'll click off of this for a second click on the mask and we're going to do option i'm on a mac here so option apostrophe and it just reverses the mask really quick wake when you're doing this kind of stuff so now let's go into our exposure and we're just going to simply drag this all the way down to really highlight the masking of this and you can see probably right away look what happens Look at this here. While it masked around the feathers, it didn't do a great job. It left some of it available. Even around the face, there's a little bit of a glow. You can see the glow that comes around. And what that is, is that's just the mask not being all that accurate. So let's go ahead and open up this next image here. And it's the same image. The only difference is, is that it's a, a different virtual copy. So let's go in here to our masking and we're gonna do objects this time. Now what we're going to do is we'll take our brush and we're going to paint around the object that we want to be masked out. So let's go ahead and do that. All the way down through the feathers. And then when you let it go, Lightroom Classic makes a mask for it. So again, we're going to take that mask and we're going to invert it with the shortcut key, option apostrophe or alt apostrophe. And now we're going to slide this down Wow, look at that. Look how much better that is. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can see really what we've got going here. Look at that. That's pretty good. We still have a little bit of a glow around it, but man, did it do a much better job than the feathers. Let's just do a little comparison here. And you can see the difference here. This is the object mask and this is the subject mask. So really right off the top, we can see that the object mask is a much better choice when we're, when we're doing a mask like this in a, in a simple scenario like this. So let's try another one here. We've got a young lady walking. Let's go ahead and click on this. Let's go in and create a mask. Now we can do subject. Let's go ahead and click on subject and let it create a subject mask. Again, we're gonna invert it. And now let's go ahead and slide that exposure down to the background so we can see how well of a mask it did. And look at that. For the subject mask of a person like this, it was actually pretty darn good. Let's look at her hair. Her hair looks pretty decent. And look, it grabbed all those little strands. 
and it didn't get in between her belt loop here, but it did a pretty good job. Little bit of a glow around it. So let's go ahead and try the next one. And we'll go in here and this time we're going to do objects. So let's go ahead and paint around her. Make sure we capture all the hair. Now with the object mask, you don't really have to paint it entirely. You just need to enclose it and it selects it right there. So let's go ahead and invert that. So we're working on the background, slide that background back and let's take a look. So not, not bad. It did a pretty good job. A little bit of, again, that green is still showing through on her belt loop over here in the hair. Let's compare that to the last one and see how it did. So there is some, some bleed through. So this one is our object mask and this is our subject mask. And it, it still appears that the object mask did a better job than subject mask. Actually, the hair actually looks a little bit better than subject over here than it does here on the object. So again, these are two different ways that we can do this, right? So let's go back here one second. Since it's a person, let's make another virtual copy. And let's do another type of mask here. So Lightroom does offer a people mask, right? So if we, if we scroll down over here, we can see it developing and it puts a little face of the person. So let's go ahead and click on this. And now it's going to say, well, what, what do you want mask? You know, if we wanted just to mask the facial skin or body or whatever, otherwise we're going to do entire person. So we're going to tell it to do the entire person and create a mask. And we've got the mask. We're going to invert it just like before. And now we're going to do our slider. And now look at that. So when it comes to masking inside of Lightroom Classic, the object mask is the best so far. I mean, cause this is, this is really not good at all. So, so if you wanted to come in and do some work on it, you could like add to the mask and say, use a brush for instance, and you know, try to add that to it. And, you know, that's a little more work that you have to do on each one, but that is a way that you could go in and add to the mask and see if it could actually improve it. But, you know, we're trying to streamline this. The whole idea of these, these products that are creating things for you is to save you time. And so you don't want to spend more time. You want to spend less time. So let's check out one more here. So we got this one might be a little more difficult, right? Because we've got this squirrel that's on a branch and the branch is kind of cutting across in front of his face. So let's check it out and see what we can do. Let's go to subject and take a look at our mask. Now we can see right off that subject decided not only the squirrel was important, but this branch as well. Now, again, we could come in here and subtract that if we wanted to, but you can see the, the overflow onto this branch all the way down to here. So this doesn't appear to be a great mask. So let's go ahead and try the next one. And we're gonna do object. Now we take our brush and we brush over. Try to capture his feet. And it made a pretty good mask, much better than the subject mask. So let's go in and zoom up just a little bit, see if we can add anything to it. Well, there's this foot here. Now we could brush that in, or if we want to add, what we're going to do is we're going to add another object mask. So let's go ahead and do select objects. And we only only want what we want, right? We don't want to, we really don't want to try it to get it to do too much. So we're just going to come in here and there, let's add that. Look what it did. It did a pretty good job. It went around the fur. We could do the same thing over here. Let's add another object mask. We're just going to try to get the rest of that claw. 
So there, it does, it does a pretty good job. We'll add another object mask. And we'll add his eye and the fur around it. Now let's take a look. Let's go back. And we're gonna invert this, of course, like we've been doing. And now we're gonna take and bring this exposure down and see how this actually looked. So not bad, it did a pretty good job. Let's zoom up a little bit. It did a pretty good job of selecting just the squirrel, just the squirrel's body, his hair. And you know, that hair is not easy to, to do, right? But that's pretty good. So after we've done all these images, we've come to the conclusion that the object mask is much more accurate than the subject mask. And even if you're gonna add to that, we want to add to it with an object mask. So that's a better way to get exactly the subject selected inside of Lightroom Classic. Now I wanna show you what happens though, if we take one of these images into Photoshop and use some of those tools to create a really fine selection. If you're enjoying this content, hit that like button. It really helps the video get recognized faster on inside of YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon so you'll be notified of my next video release. You can always reach me directly if you'd like to at email terry at imagelight.com. And also make a point to leave a comment. What mask do you like? Have you tried this where, where you're working with subject mask or object mask? What's, what do you like most, most of all? In fact, through the comments, I used to use subject mask and then I'd go in with a brush and fine tune it. But somebody on the comments on one of my videos suggested that I use the object mask. And now when I've really sat down to compare them, I really think that object mask is pretty good. But let's just hop one of these pictures into Photoshop so we can see the difference there in terms of a selection. So let's take our original. We're going to right click and go edit in Photoshop 2026. All right. So now we've got our image here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to do similar work, although we're going to let Photoshop make a subject selection. So we come over here and we do the quick selection tool. We'll click on that and we're going to come up here and we're going to select subject. And remember on this pull down, I have it set as a default for cloud because it's a little more accurate, but you can leave it on device too. But I usually use cloud and make sure to put it on cloud. If you're obviously if you're connected to the internet, it makes it a little more accurate. Let's go ahead and click on that. It's gonna think about it and it's created a selection here. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that and move it up onto its own layer. And we know how to do that. That's command or control J. All right, so now we've got our selection up on its own layer. So let's grab our eyedropper tool and let's select the color right around the bird. So we'll click that. And we can see down here that it's now put it into place. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a new layer. We're gonna hit the plus button right here and new layer comes up and we're gonna fill it with that light blue sky color. Perfect. So now you can see that the bird is selected on its own and then this is our, our background. So let's go ahead and zoom up here and see what we've got. We wanna see how good this selection is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this background and we're gonna make it dark. So we'll do Command L, bring up levels, and let's go ahead and slide that over. And we'll click OK. Now let's take a look at our selection. Wow, that's pretty good. That's a pretty darn good selection. The only one little thing that I'd like to fix, and that's this haloing that's, it happened on the ones in Lightroom too, but there's a way that we can fix this. So let me show you how to do that to make a really, really fine type of a selection. So we're back on our bird layer here, and we're just gonna hit Command or Control if you're on a PC and click. And that puts our selection back in place. So then we go up to Select, and we go to Modify, now under modify, we're gonna to go to contract. So we wanna contract this selection, well, let's say by three pixels. We'll say, okay. See how the, the little blinky lines go inside just a little bit of what we had. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back up to select and we're gonna use modify and we're gonna do feather. And what feather does is softens that selection. So we're gonna put that number in as 1.5. So half of what we did, we did it three, we 
we contracted it by three pixels, but we're just going to feather radius by 1.5. We'll click OK. And now what we want to do is we want to invert that so that we're going to cut out anything that's outside of that. And the way to do that is Shift, Command, or Control I, and that inverts it. In fact, you know it's inverted because you can see the lines running around the outside up here. So let me just reverse that so you can see. Now it's on the bird, and now it's everything but the bird. So let's zoom back in to where we were. And of course, we don't want to see those marching ants uh, selection line. We can hit Command or Control H, and that just hides them. Let's get in close. So now it's selected everything outside. So now what we're going to do is just delete that, right? And we do that by hitting Command or Control X, and that deletes it. And look what it did. It went in three pixels, then came out a pixel and a half and softened it. And now look at this. Look how accurate this is all around his hair. Look at that. That's a tremendous selection. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll compare it back inside of Lightroom to those others. So this was the one we did in Photoshop. We'll go ahead and put a, a color label to it. And let's compare our first one, which is our selection. Let's go ahead and hit C and compare. So obviously way better than that. That, that selected one wasn't very good. So let's go ahead and try that one. This is the one where we did the object selection and that was much better. But as we zoom up, you can really see how much more accurate the Photoshop selection was. See how this is still blue. It has this little, these lines and a little bit of diffusion off the top where here it's perfect. So as we go through this, you can see if you really want a perfect selection, then you need to go into Photoshop. All right, so what we've discovered here, if you really want a good selection inside of Lightroom Classic, opt away from the subject selection and use object selection. It does take a little more time because you got to take the brush and cover the area that you want, but that's a much more accurate way to go. And you can also use object selection to add to your selection so that it can make a mask the way that you want it. However, if you really want something super accurate, you got to go into Photoshop and do the technique I showed you where you make a subject selection and then contract that selection, invert it, and then feather that selection and delete that excess area so you get rid of any of that glow banding around your subject. All right, that's it for this week. See you next time.